Hello everyone. My name is Chef Didar Singh, Assistant Professor, Chitkara School of Hospitality. In the last part of the video, in part one of chocolate, we discussed about what is chocolate, what is the manufacturing process of chocolate, types of chocolate, and various storage methods for chocolate. In today's session, we'll discuss about what is tempering. What are the various methods we use for melting chocolate and what are the various methods we use for tempering of chocolate and we will also discuss the science behind the chocolate and the physics involved in making of chocolate. The question that comes into our mind is what is tempering? Tempering during the process of manufacturing of chocolate the final process of manufacturing chocolate is called tempering which involves manipulating the temperature to produce the most stable crystals to provide the best appearance, texture and prevention of degradation. In simple words, tempering chocolate is the act of heating and cooling chocolate to specific temperatures to align fat molecules in cocoa butter to the desired crystal structure so that when it sets the chocolate has desirable aesthetic properties and stable shelf life. Proper tempering of chocolate is done to stabilize it for making candies and confections that gives chocolate a smooth glossy finish and keeps it from easy melting on your fingers and allows it to set up beautifully for dipped and chocolate covered treats. Chocolate nuts, chocolate dipped candies and chocolate dipped strawberries are just some of the good and delicacies and delicious goodies that have a thin rich layer of chocolate wrapped around them. Now the question comes into our mind, how do pastry and candy chefs make these delectable treats. The first step is to melt and temper chocolate. Tempering again can be defined as is a process in which the cocoa butter is chocolate is hardened into a specific crystalline pattern. When the cocoa butter molecules are in this pattern the chocolate is shiny and breaks with a sharp snap. Tempering chocolate is an art and a science. It's a science because the tempering is temperature dependent. If the temperature of the melted chocolate is too high, the chocolate will burn. If the temperature of the melted chocolate is too low, it might never harden properly. The various tips for melting chocolate are number one break or cut chocolate into small pieces that is half a inch pieces for even melting stir gently and frequently while melting melt chocolate over low or medium low heat or use a double boiler chocolate burns easily so it's best to chop to melt the chocolate slowly third be sure that your work surface, pans and tools are absolutely dry before melting chocolate. Even a drop of water or other liquid can cause chocolate to seize up. What do I mean by seize up? Seize up is the instant transformation of melted chocolate from a free flowing liquid stage to a stiff and grainy stage. And it is the result of tiny amount of moisture being introduced to the chocolate. Now let's discuss the various ways to melt chocolate. The first is by using a double boiler. Break chocolate into small pieces and place in top pan of double boiler over hot but not boiling water. A glass or metal mixing bowl on the top of a saucepan half full of water works as a stand in if you don't have a double boiler on hand. 
Allow chocolate to melt, stirring occasionally until smooth. The second method that we can use to melt chocolate is the direct heat method. When you are adding chocolate to a batter or melting with butter, the direct heat method works well, but it's not the best choice for dipping or molding. Place chopped or broken chocolate in a saucepan over low heat and stir constantly to avoid the chocolate getting too hot to use. Remove from the heat when only small lumps of chocolate remain and stir until completely melted. The third method is by using a microwave. Place chocolate in microwave oven in a heat proof glass bowl or a container and heat medium power for 30 seconds intervals. Remove and stir each time before returning to microwave and repeating it. Each microwave is unique and affects the chocolate differently. So please monitor closely. When only small lumps remain, remove and continue to stir until completely melted. Let's again repeat and understand what is tempering and why it is important. Tempering chocolate is the process of pre-crystallization of cocoa butter to make the chocolate suitable for processing. This assures a perfect finished product with a hard snap and glossy finish. One of the example and very leading chocolates that is Calibu chocolates are great for tempering as they are easily moldable and comes with the right amount of pure cocoa butter in them. Tempering chocolate is not an impossible task and the chocolatiers around the world have been doing this for ages. Being a chocolatier, you should follow one of these six methods of tempering chocolate to temper your chocolate. That are tempering with the melter, tempering with double boiler, tempering in the microwave, tempering with cocoa butter, tempering with tempering machine, and tempering on marble or tabletop. Now, let's discuss one of the method for tempering chocolate that is tempering with chocolate chip and melter. It is also known as the seeding method. The seeding method is tempering chocolate by adding small amounts of unmelted chocolate chips to the melted chocolate. It's fast, easy and incredibly efficient. The steps to temper chocolate chips using a chocolate melter are First, you need to melt some chocolate at 40 degrees Celsius in a chocolate melter. Reduce the melter temperature to 32 degrees Celsius and then start adding the chocolate chips to melted chocolate. Do not add too much of chips at one point of time. Add little by little and keep stirring to melt the chocolate. If the chips start melting too soon, then you need to add some more into the melter. If it melts too slowly, adjust the temperature to fasten the process. The temperature for dark chocolate should be around 31 to 32 degrees Celsius. For milk chocolate, it should be around 31 degrees Celsius and for white chocolate, it varies from 29 degrees Celsius. If the temperature remains high, even after all the chips have melted, add more and stir to bring down the temperature. Stir till the mixture is consistent enough to be used and have no lumps. Then allow it to cool down for it to have the glossy consistency. The second method for tempering chocolate is tempering with chocolate and the double boiler. This one is a variation of the before mentioned seeding method. The use of the double boiler instead of a melter is one of the major differences between this method and the previous one. All you need are some chocolate chips or finely chopped chocolate, a boiler and water. Steps to easily get tempered chocolate using a boiler are pour in water up to one third of the boiler and get the water boiling to a high temperature. 
when the water has sufficiently come up to a boil place the bowl of chocolate chips or finely chopped chocolate above it you need to be careful about choosing the bowl as it must be big enough to fit in the mouth of the boiler but must not touch the water the point is not to let the steam escape from the sides it is best to choose a tempered glass bowl so that it can take in the temperature without getting damaged keep stirring the chocolate chips to help in the process of melting and the steam will gradually melt the chocolate in a few minutes the temperature requirements for this one are as same as the previous method remove the bowl when you notice that there are no granules left in the chocolate let it cool down and gradually the consistency will be reached the third method of tempering chocolate is tempering of chocolate in the microwave if you would like to temper a small batch of chocolate there is nothing better than using a microwave it is the fastest and one of the most effective methods ever students frequently ask of how to temper chocolate in microwave and the answer lies in the steps we are discussing right now take the chocolate chips in a bowl and put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds when you are using a microwave oven always heat up the chocolate at full power but for a short burst of time take out the bowl and begin stirring the bowl to mix up the semi melted chocolate after a few minutes of getting in and out of the microwave you can expect the chocolate to be melted nicely here the stirring stirring is the key because when you take out the chocolate a lot of chips are melted by a good stir if you still feel some large lumps are left put it again in the microwave for a few seconds when you see that it feels just slightly lumpy give it some stir and the granules will be removed do not put it back in the microwave you know it is ready when it reaches the right tempering chocolate temperature the fourth method of tempering chocolate is tempering chocolate with cocoa butter this is one of the most preferred tempering chocolate methods and chocolatiers preferred tempering with cocoa butter because it's a very simple easy and clean method of getting a perfect consistency the ratio of chocolate to cocoa butter is 1 kg to 10 grams that makes is about 1% of the chocolate you take the method of using cocoa butter is step 1 melt the chocolate in the melter till all the granules are gone completely measure the cocoa butter and pour it into the melted chocolate and start stirring when the temperature of the melted chocolate is about or at 34 degrees celsius while stirring you will notice that the chocolate has reached the shiny and glossy texture indicating that it is ready check the temperature of the chocolate and see to it that it has reached the temperature of 31 to 32 degrees celsius for dark chocolate and if you are using white chocolate the temperature would be 29 degrees celsius run the test with the pellet knife to double check if it is ready or not the science that works here is that pure cocoa butter already contains the stable butter crystals that are needed to temper chocolate the key to applying this method lies in using the right amount of cocoa butter only the right amount of cocoa butter will give you the beautifully glossy chocolate products if we don't add sufficient amount of cocoa butter the chocolate will take forever to harden and will have a grayish dull color with fat bloom The fifth method of tempering chocolate is 
द टेम्परिंग चॉकलेट विद टेम्परिंग मशीन चॉकलेट टेम्परिंग मशीन कैन बी अज हेल्प इफ यू आर अ शेफ लुकिंग टू टेम्पर लार्ज क्वान्टिटी ऑफ चॉकलेट फॉर योर क्रिएशन यू नीड टू टेक नो हैसल एंड द मशीन टेक्स केयर ऑफ इट ऑल द ओनली थिंग यू नीड टू बी केयरफुल ऑफ इज द टेम्परेचर द मशीन मेल्ट द चॉकलेट एट अ टेम्परेचर ऑफ फोर्टी फाइव डिग्री सेल्शियस लोअर द टेम्परेचर टू थर्टी वन टू थर्टी टू डिग्री सेल्शियस फॉर डार्क एंड ट्वेंटी नाइन डिग्री फॉर वाइट चॉकलेट एट द चिप्स विच हैव बीन कैप्ट एट एटीन टू ट्वेंटी डिग्री सेल्शियस द मूवमेंट ऑफ द व्हील विल हेल्प ब्लैंडिंग द चिप्स इन टू द मेल्टेड चॉकलेट गिविंग यू impeccably tempered chocolate the last method of tempering chocolate tempering chocolate on marble or table top the three basic requirements for tempering chocolate on marble top are getting the time temperature and the movement right sure you will have to work a bit harder for this method but the results will make it worth melt the chocolate at the temperature of 45 degrees celsius and then lower the temperature to 27 degrees celsius before pouring the chocolate on the table top raise the temperature to about 30 degrees celsius keep some melted chocolate in the melter and do not pour it all pour one third amount on the table top and start turning it using your chocolate scraper continuously The idea here is that the chocolate loses its crystals as it melts and you are bringing the crystallization back by tossing and turning it after it has reached the ideal flow mix it with the remaining chocolate in the melter and your work is done you can pick out any of the tempering chocolate methods we have discussed and if done in a right way they will give the right kind of tempered chocolate for your chocolate delight believe it or not physics is involved in chocolate production without the careful use of temperature and pressure we wouldn't have the wonderful confectionery the physics terms that are involved with the making of chocolate are temperature and viscosity viscosity can be considered as a frictional force in a fluid physics is important in the production of chocolate because chocolatiers can use temperature to change the viscosity of liquid chocolate and therefore change its use lower temperature make the liquid or the liquid chocolate more viscous that is thick while higher temperatures make the liquid chocolate less viscous it is more runny the viscosity may need to be very low if the chocolate has to be set around a biscuit or a sweet or it ha- may have to be more viscous if the chocolate has to be molded of course once the chocolate has been produced this may not be the end of its processing Chocolate is often used to decorate and cover other confectioneries like chocolate uh, cakes and for this it has to be able to flow the flow characteristic or the viscosity are very important too runny or the liquid chocolate with low viscosity and the chocolate won't stick to the cake and certain molding and depositing machines will not work too thick or with high viscosity the chocolate is difficult to pump up from one part of the factory to another and the apparatus may get blocked or more importantly the manufacturers of chocolate will lose money by using too much chocolate the viscosity of chocolate has to be carefully controlled temperature is also utilized during the tempering of chocolate which can change its texture this stage is where the chocolate 
mixture is repeatedly heated rapidly cooled and then gently warmed again this process causes the crystalline structure of cocoa butter to change and eventually giving the perfect outcome of a glossy finish and a snap when breaking it everything in food is science the only subjective part is when you eat it naturally that we call chocolate is not only a sweet treat but is a complex biological structure the deeper we understand what we eat and cook at a molecular level the more we can optimize the taste and use thank you for listening